Hi, I'm Randall. You might know me as... Randy. Randy, where are you? Randy. Randy. Yeah. Hang out with Captain Q long enough, and you'll end up buying a boat. And I'm no exception. So join me as I navigate the ups and downs of owning an old sailboat. So if you saw my last episode, I somehow fooled the crew at Shannon Boat Company to answer their front door. And then I convinced Walter Schultz, the founder of Shannon, to come and help give me some advice on my boat projects. What Walter didn't realize is that I'm pretty good at eavesdropping, and I heard he was going to go try to resurrect an old engine that had been sitting for five years. So since I have no shame, I invited myself along. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to tag along with Walter Schultz as he revives an old marine diesel engine. There he is. There he is. Right. He's my man. Hey, thanks for letting me uh, tag along here. Good to see you. Thanks for coming. Uh, here's what this is all about. This boat's been sitting here for over five years. You cannot just carry a battery onto this thing, hook it up, and hit the start button. Because if you do start the engine, and you really might if you crank it long enough, all right, with these pistons going up and down, and camshafts, and valves, and springs, and all the stuff that's in this motor, all right, is bone dry. There's no oil, no lubricant. You have somebody in a boatyard, slam it with a battery. Ah, the engine runs. Great. Meanwhile, you've knocked five and maybe 5,000 hours off the engine because all of that metal is tear tearing against each other. All right. So there's a process. I learned it when I was a kid in boatyards. So what's the cutoff for when this kind of process needs to be done, do you think? Like, is it after two years it's been sitting? Is it right. Three. The old rule was three. All right, if an engine's been sitting for three years yeah. uh, or longer, all right, um, three. And is this something, if I don't have a mechanic, can I just do it myself? Yes. Yeah. You'll see that, all right? Uh, it's, it's, this isn't brain surgery, yeah. all right? You need a couple of open-end wrenches, all right, uh, maybe a socket wrench. Mostly what you need is intestinal fortitude, all right? And some religion. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Amen. That you actually can do this. Yeah. It's a logical process. So, yeah, you could step by step. Okay. All right. But you could also show it to your brother-in-law, Harry, all right, <laughs> who's a car mechanic, all right, and skip getting all, yeah. uh, getting your hands all uh, dirty and just upload this thing. That's why we're here. I know it looks sad, but believe it or not, uh, I did check when I was getting on a boat. Uh, there's only 2,900 hours on this engine. This engine can go eight, nine, 10,000 hours. You know. Does anything here bother you, like, I don't know, corrosion or surface rust or All any of it. that? Everything bothers me, all right? <laughs> For one thing, that alternator's probably shot, all right? I see the air intake is missing. Uh, you know, but the rest is paint. It's just paint. All right. You know, somebody changed the belt. Here's a remote oil filter, uh, so you don't have to crawl underneath the engine. It's it's paint. This thing is gonna be in this boat another 20 years, maybe longer, if it's just uh, maintained. What's the first step? First step is to see if there is any life in this engine, all right? Because who knows, five years ago, whenever they dragged this boat up on a beach, they could have brought it up with a blown engine. So, you know, the next test and the most important step, maybe, in this whole process is, is the engine seized? Could have been ran out of oil, could have overheated, it could have been any number of terminal things. So what we have to do is and it's a real high tech test too. All right, so stand by. All right, when we get the computers and everything uh, <laughs> running. All right, it's very high tech. All right, 
this is it, all right? And on the front of all of these engines, now a small engine like this, I can do this by hand with the injectors in. If this was a big six-cylinder V8, we'd have to take these injectors out to relieve compression. Yep. All right. So what is this faulting? thing? This goes directly to the crankshaft. Okay. All right. Crankshaft is inside that all the pistons uh, attached to. All right. And this, now you got to brace yourself, and then we're going to turn it. There it is, folks. This engine gets to live for another 20 or 30 years. So what happens if you if you can't get that undone and you bought you bought a boat and you If you can't do this, what I just did, all right, now I put a little muscle to it, but how much muscle? It's a little bar, all right. It's done. Yeah. You take the socket out, pack up your lunch and uh, <laughs> get your stuff, and go find another boat. All right. Especially on all four zone. Now you see it it didn't take a whole hell of a lot of muscle. You could put a little bit more. Don't stick a big pipe in there. Everything in this engine is going up and down right now. Valves, but that's all we want to do because they're dead dry. There's no lubricant in the top of this engine. Um, While I'm down here, all the oil and everything is sitting right now in the bottom of this engine, oil sump. And in that oil sump, is an oil pump, all right? And when the engine's running, the oil comes all the way up, all through here, up into the valves, up into the springs, up to the cams, into the pistons. It comes this way, all right? And then circulates back down into the sump through a filter and so forth and so forth, all right? But when the engine is shut off, everything drains down. So now we have an engine three, five years sitting here there's no lubricant here anywhere it's steel on steel who knows when this oil was changed before they pulled the boat out the oil is like mud all right you know so what we're gonna do is uh we're gonna where's my uh, jug of uh mystery oil here Story this stuff has been around I think uh, Henry Ford used this in 1908, all right? I have no idea what the mystery is, all right? All I know is this used to be in a tin can, and probably before that it was in a glass jug. This stuff has been around, like, forever, all right? And what it is, it's just very thin uh, oil with some other mystery. Uh, I don't know. Some magic in there? All right. Is this a good thing to keep on your boat? Do you need it Only if you want to get your fingernails dirty, all right? All right. You know, uh, I'm going to put about a half a quart of of this in the oil fill right here, all right? You know, and uh, and let it drain down. But we're going to have to take this off, uh, too, this valve cover. The object here is to extend or save the useful life of this engine after it's been stuck sitting here, uh, for five years so next step i'm going to take this off and uh we're going to lubricate this engine from top down and then we're going to try to start it stuff goes up and down and click clack click clack what it needs is this we're going to spray we're going to lubricate and oil this as much everywhere you can't put too much of this in runs into the belt who cares that seems like a pretty good tip to uh, put it in a spray bottle yeah well i also have been with me for about 50 years all right is these valves, that's our way into the cylinders. So I flood this. Let me put this over here so you can see. I flood it. So when the valves go up and down, what we want is this stuff to get into the cylinders. There's four cylinders in here, and pistons go up and down. All right? Every engine. Even gas. Same. And then we're going to wait 
I don't know, a half hour, we'll have coffee. All right, we'll take a break so that this all bleeds down. And it's going to take a while. All right, so we'll stop with this uh, Hollywood stuff and just let it sit. How do you take your coffee? Uh, a little cream and sugar. <laughs> Next step, we're back from break. The coffee sucked. All right. <laughs> I noticed you put the cover back on. You know, yeah. All right. Uh, we willed this back on, okay. you know, and I was able to get it on and off uh, without tearing up the gasket, but I have brought a spare gasket with us uh, uh, for this engine, and you just order it. Is that uh, a common problem where you might have the gasket kind yeah, of fused? Yeah, if you have to. Have. You know, it's, it's sunspots, El Nino. You never know. Of a, a boat engine that's just a year old and in service, you try to get this off, you tear up yeah. the gasket. All right. We didn't tear up the gasket, amazingly enough. Here's the dipstick, and we're going to check all right, how, how our drainage is going. All right. And if we put the camera on here, all right, that's the high mark terrible dipstick but what i want to see all right is how my mystery oil all right is it reached there yet and you can smell it actually i can smell it we've got enough oil in this engine right now to start it all right and yeah it's uh we're almost there a few more minutes we'll put this back you don't want this to be bone dry but uh and what does the mystery oil smell like? It smells different from your regular... Yeah, you know, you'd have to have... It's one of those smell test things. Uh, you'd have to have a cord oil next to you. All right. Most of all, you see how loose it is. All right. Yeah. Uh, so the next step is follow the logic. There is a logic to this. Every machine. And this one's very simple logic. This is a fuel felt. It's a Raycor. All right, and it's hooked to a tank that I'm standing over. I know it's the tank is underneath me because I put it there uh, a million years ago. Fuel comes up through this ray core, goes through a line. All right, it's not hooked up. I, we pulled it off and goes to a lift pump and circulates all the way around. And there's an injector pump that pumps it up. What's important, we don't want to use stale dead fuel that's in the tank or even this ray core. I don't want to use that scurvy, scroungy fuel that's in this tanks or in a ray core. So what we're doing is we've just rigged this up. All right. And we're going to put, goes right into, right over here is the lift pump. Uh, there was a the hose was already on it. All we did was just uh, take it off, and we have this, all right, this loving rake, all right, because we want fresh fuel. Just fill this. There we go. Yeah, and all that's right. just enough to get it started, right? Just enough to get it started. We want to crank the engine, get it running, and then we'll shut it off and rig up. All right, and we're going to put this hose spilling without spilling diesel fuel ah, all over the place and all over me my wife loves this one when, when i come home all full all full of diesel fuel and smell the whole house and, and that line comes down here and there's a little lift pump probably can't get it uh on camera but it's got a little lever that you can go up and down with truth of the matter is it's a waste of time but but it makes me feel good. All right. Uh, this is a bleed valve right on top. And we've got to get the air out of this hose. All right. And there's a, a little diaphragm pump. That's actually the lift pump for the engine on the bottom. All right. And I'm going to open this up. And, uh, and, and so basically, when we, whenever you attach something new to the fuel line, you're introducing some air into it? Yeah, and this engine, and I'm telling you, microscopic little bubble. That's all it takes. This motor won't run. All right. Well, you know, there's no air 
can be introduced, we have to get all the air out of this engine. Now, right now, I don't think there's a lot of air in the engine, but other than what we just introduced with this hose, everything else is as we found it. All right, so we get the air out right here. We crack that. All right, and then starts a process. All right, I'll pump in this foolish little thing. All right. And that's a lot of air we have to do. Do all lift pumps have those little uh, yeah. manual pumps? Yeah, especially this vintage. The later engines have a have a push, and that that works about worse than this. All right, it's just a tedious process, and eventually, trust me, all right, you know, we'll be here at uh, having a night shot yeah. to get the air out of this, but and it so will come out. And right. So in a couple hours we'll see yeah. a little bubble or something. Right. Or? You're gonna see fuel and a bubble, bubbles. Okay. So it looks like soap sets almost. All right, right here. All right. So we're gonna have to pump that. I can also tap the starter now because we've got everything lubricated, and that will also blow this out. So we're gonna leave this a little cracked. You can start the engine with this cracked. In order to bleed that out, the easy way is to start the yeah. engine. We're going to be here all day with the sand pump. We're going to just spin the uh, engine, and we're going to bleed the thing uh, right out. And I'm standing back because I don't want to get splashed with bubbles and uh, diesel fuel. All right, let's uh, let's fire this engine. Okay. There we go. That uh, that looks. Uh, pretty good, uh, pretty good. All right, and what I'm going to do now, uh, as soon as I find a wrench, uh, is uh, I'm going to tighten this up. So I'm just closing the bleeder valve. Yeah, I'm closing the bleeder valve now. We got all that, as you can see. I don't know if the camera picks it up. We got all fuel all over the goddamn place. It all went down in a bilge, and uh, who cares? And uh, <laughs> What I'm doing, we're done with that. Now, is it going to start? Uh, oh, that's the million dollar question. Uh, not too tight right there, because we might have to open this up if we hear the engine stuttering. We may have to open this up and let some air out that we didn't get out. The air will come out right there. All right, we've got everything tied up. And uh, how about uh, raw water? All right, we got that's a good, good question. Right. What we did was right here. We're using the garden hose. Uh, this is the raw water intake. There's a seacock right down here, all right, that uh, we'll get a shot of. And the water gets picked up. Seawater comes up into this, all right. Hose goes over, all right, and it goes right to here, all right. You follow the hose, all right. In here, is a little impeller that spins. So right now, we don't care about overheating. We're all going to run this engine for about a minute, 30 seconds. But the water comes in here. All right, we're going to check this, see what we have. We use very scientific. Uh, guess what? Uh, we got we need a jug. We're going to have to put some more uh, antifreeze uh, in here. Right, hold on. There it is. All right. All topped off. All topped off. We actually don't need this at this moment. This impeller here, I want to make sure it's wet when we start the engine. So with that, all right, I noticed that this is good. I already checked it. All right, we got most of the air out. And then comes the loving the loving question is, will this engine start for me today? The magic moment. All right. Got a man, one of my men, uh, Tom Quinlan. He's out in the cockpit. Uh, we're ready to go. Now, this is a little tricky. You want to be a little careful with this. All right. Because you want to, before you do this, you want to make sure that there is a manual, manual, not a push button solenoid thing. All right. Uh, way to shut this engine off because if it gets going all right and it's going and going we can't shut it off that's not the time to be thinking about it so what we did is this boat because the genius 
Uh, and the miracle of the guy that designed this thing, he put a manual shutoff out there in the cockpit. So we have a manual shutoff. Tom's is controlling that just in case. All right, we don't want to depend on a stupid solenoid. So we're going to start this, maybe. All right, and we may be here tomorrow. Clear. Again. Kidding me? Typical boat. Come on, give me a break. So the next logical step is to bleed it more? Uh, that's all you can do. Yeah. All right. You know, it, it, it won't start if there's just a tiny air bubble. All right. So I thought we got all, all the air out, uh, but we didn't. All right. So now we go to plan B. Here's another scientific uh, piece of elaborate thing. We're using a bottle cap. All right. This is off my uh, squeeze bottle. Uh, Marvel mystery oil. And... Yep, that's what I thought. Okay. We pumped. There's the fuel. We pumped it all through, but we also introduced air here because I wasn't paying attention. Yeah. Seems awfully thirsty. Too thirsty. I have to check all the fittings. You know, one of these, you should no way be putting this much fuel in. But it's a boat. Obviously, we're picking up air somewhere. And if we're seeing it here, you know, it's probably in this line. We've got this crazy line with all these clamps and everything. All right. So I'm going to start right here and I'm going to go around and tighten the clamps up. All right, you know, and yeah, see this clamp, just not tight. All right, that's it. Okay. If we crank the engine, will the fuel come out of that the little mini funnel? Well, I'm hoping bubbles come out of it. I'm looking for bubbles. Uh, all right, Thomas. Bubbles, bubbles, bubbles everywhere. I gotta top that off. There's air. Well, I don't know what else is not tight or what's leaking. All right, Tom, go ahead. Yeah. Stop. Crack. Stop. The son of a... Be kidding me. Yeah, nothing but air. Go. Up. Up. God, I'm lucky 13 right here.
Well, there it is, folks. I don't know if you can hear me or not, but it's time for lunch. Right. It's time for lunch. All right. What's the takeaway for someone watching? When it comes to boats, we got a term, I don't know where the hell it came from. All right, dog it. All right. Now, I've got dogs. They don't do anything all day, so I don't know where working like a dog ever came from because they don't do anything but watch me or sleep, all right? But you dog the job. This is a classic of dog and a job, all right? We had a loose fitting hose, whatever, clamp, who knows, all right? You know, you just have to believe, all right? Find religion, all right? That there's the gods are watching you or not, or they may hate you today. Some days they just hate you. Nothing's going to work. All right. You come back tomorrow. All right. You just dog the job. There's a logic to it. What it is, a life lesson in perseverance. All right. Just don't take no for an answer. I knew that son of a bitch was going to start. All right. And there's no way I was leaving today till it ran. All right. And I knew that. All right. And that's what you saw. If you like this engine revival with Walter, we have some segments that were cut for time. We've got some outtakes from this week's episode and also last week's episode and a couple of side stories over on our Patreon. So head on over and check that out. And speaking of Patreon, thanks to our Patreon supporters. Without your support, this production wouldn't be possible. So as always, thanks very much. I want to give a special thanks to Walter for taking the time out of his busy schedule. I want to thank Bill and Rhett and Tom and Kevin and the rest of the crew at Shannon Yachts for welcoming me as a rookie onto the scene. And yeah, every one of those guys is left-handed. <laughs>